Grace to you in peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Our text for today is the Gospel just read, taken from St. Mark chapter 1, our Lord's temptation in the wilderness, as well as the temptation and the sacrifice of Isaac from Genesis 22. The episode of Abraham and the sacrifice of Isaac is one of the strangest and hardest for us to understand in the Old Testament. God had called Abraham to a new land. God had promised to make him the father of many nations. He had attached these promises to Abraham and had given him the land, a beautiful wife, more than he could ever want or need. And after many, many years, God had also given Abraham a son, his only son, Isaac, whose name means something like laughter or God laughs. Isaac, whom Abraham had as a son when he was a hundred years old and his wife was ninety. Isaac who brought laughter and joy to Abraham and in his old age. And now here is God asking Abraham to sacrifice his son on Mount Moriah. Unthinkable. Impossible. First of all, the question we would ask is, is this murder? Secondly, how can God keep all of his promises if Abraham kills his only son, Isaac, whom he loves. Would God be able to care for them after asking such an impossible thing of Abraham? Would Abraham want his care? Sometimes when it comes to God's demands, we cannot see past them and believe that God will take care of all things give to the church, how will I take care of my family? Be honest on my taxes? Protect my neighbor even when he's a jerk? Speak well of my co-workers? How can I even keep from desiring what isn't mine? God's law at times seems impossible to keep, and what makes it worse we may not even understand how it is helpful or good at all. This is where the relationship between faith and the law comes into place. Adam and Eve understood the perfect law and will of God. They knew that God's will for them was good, always good. God never desired their harm, only wanted life for them and for them to have it abundantly. And so when God asked something of them, they knew, they understood that it was for their good and for the good of the whole world, even if they couldn't connect all the dots of why this was so. That's what was robbed from them by the fall of now they could no longer see God as good. And because they could not see God as good, they cannot see his law as good either. This is why when it comes to the law, there's always one part of us that, well, that questions the basic point of the whole thing. Why must I do what God commands? Does God really have my best interests at heart? How many of you have questioned whether this or that law of God really applies to you or really matters at all? Would you have done as well as Abraham? Far less our Lord in his temptation in the wilderness? So Abraham goes up the mountain with his son, carrying the fire and the knives. 
There's no way that this command of God made sense, and yet Abraham trusted that God would do what he promised, even though it was utter folly to his human eyes. We read the following in the book of Hebrews about Abraham. By faith, Abraham, when he was tested, offered up Isaac. He who had received the promises was in the act of offering up his only son, of whom it was said, Through Isaac shall your offspring be named. He considered that God was able to raise him from the dead, from which, figuratively speaking, he did receive him back. So Abraham, faith, he trusted that God would take care of Isaac, even if it made no human earthly sense. Fast forward now to our Lord's temptation in the wilderness. He is driven by the Spirit into the wilderness. So he goes, a stranger in the desert, like the scapegoats of old, tossed out with the sins of the people on their back. We heard on Ash Wednesday from 2 Corinthians 5 that for our sake he made him sin who knew no sin, so that we might become the righteousness of God in him. He became sin for us, took on the burden of our iniquity because we could not bear it ourselves. Our failures speak louder than words. And like Abraham, his father, Jesus did not shrink from the temptations. He does not turn aside from God's promises no matter where they may lead, even to his own death. Where you fail, Jesus succeeds. He succeeds in keeping God's law, but he also succeeds in bearing your sins and failures with him into the wilderness. The Spirit drives him into the wilderness because you cannot bear the wilderness yourself. Left to your own devices, you fail every single time. But our Lord trusts in God's promises, and so does what God commands. So what does this mean now for you, beloved? It means this. It means that Jesus first recognizes your failures, the lure of sin that calls to you every day. He knows the passions that drive you, the callousness of your heart, the slothfulness of your spirit. He knows. Because he is tempted by the same things that you are. The devil, the world, your own fearful nature. He knows all of these weaknesses because he has taken on your very humanity. He loves you more than life itself. For Abraham, God provided a ram so that he did not have to sacrifice his son. But God himself did sacrifice his only begotten son, Jesus Christ, so that you might live even though he dies. We actually have an image of this lamb on our altar during this whole season of Lent. Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of world. The lure of temptation continues, but the strength of God's Spirit dwells within you by holy baptism. You are baptized into Christ so that when he goes into the wilderness, you go with him. And because he resists the temptations of the devil, you too will have victory by the blood of Jesus Christ, God's Son. So come this day to the feast of God in his supper. Be strengthened in your struggles against sin and the devil and your own sinful nature. Recognize that in Christ you have a champion who will not fail, even if it costs him his very life. Live in the grace of Jesus Christ, the true son of Abraham and Isaac. Trust in his mercy all the days of your life. You are blessed. 
in him because you are in him. Believe it for Jesus' sake. And now the peace of God which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds through faith and the life everlasting. Amen. Who rise?